Business News Now, and for months economic officials have been telling us that sky-high inflation is poised to fall, and it looks like they're right. Early data from the Eurozone showed a dramatic reduction of price pressures. Inflation in Spain declined to just over 3% in March, down from 6% just a month earlier. Germany and Ireland reported declines as well, albeit less eye-catching than the Spanish performance. But central bankers representing a number of jurisdictions have recently warned that falling inflation may not necessarily lead to falling interest rates, which remain at their highest levels in more than a decade. Well, let's return to London, where our ICE correspondent Laurie Laird is poised to bring us up to date with the business news of the day. Laurie, thank you for rejoining us. Officials finally Pleasure getting their much hoped for fall in inflation. What's behind the latest data? Yeah, that's right, Charles. We've heard so many politicians say, don't worry, inflation is going to fall. And in the uh, pointy headed world that I inhibit, we've all been waiting for these March inflation data. That's because a year ago in March, we had that huge run up in energy prices because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And so this is the first month, March of 2023, where those year on year comparisons, when we were comparing a rise in, in 2022, 2023, to a much lower pre-invasion energy prices, this is the first month that these those big comparisons have dropped out. So we've all been waiting to see what inflation looks like, like without that distortion that was caused by the invasion of Ukraine a year ago. Uh, the, the, the jury is mixed. Absolutely, the headline rate of inflation has fallen dramatically because of that big rise in energy prices falling out of the comparison. In Spain, headline inflation down to 3.3% from 6% in the month of February. That is a massive, massive fall. Uh, and it doesn't take Spanish inflation not that far away from the ECB, the European Central Bank's 2% target. We saw quite less dramatic falls, although falls nonetheless in Germany, in Belgium, in Ireland, all of which gave us preliminary March and inflation data today. Got to keep in mind, though, here, Charles, that infl while inflation is falling, that doesn't mean that prices aren't going up. What a fall in inflation means is that prices are rising. They're just rising at a slower pace than they were a month earlier. Well, this last thing you said is actually very interesting because I was going to say that in spite of that drop in inflation that you were talking about, I mean, central bankers don't seem impressed. Not at all. And we've had a big cavalcade of central bankers descend on Washington, D.C. over the past couple of days. It's been the big economic conference for the, what's called NABE, the National Association of Business Economists. And all of the central bankers that I have been monitoring have been saying, yes, headline inflation is falling, but we're really concerned about what's called core inflation. And that's the rate of inflation once you take out volatile items like food and energy. Now, it may seem a little bit odd to, to look at inflation once you take out food and energy. After all, these are the things that people actually have to pay for. But economists want to look at whether uh, food and energy prices that went up so much after the invasion of Ukraine, whether that's starting to increase prices in the rest of the economy. One thing that very concerning to central bankers is the high price of shelter, rent costs, uh, housing costs. That has been a big concern for economists. And what they were saying, we saw, I heard from Catherine Mann, uh, a Bank of England official last night, also Isabel Schnabel, an ECB official, and they both said, yes, we welcome this fall in headline inflation, but what we're worried about is core inflation. Once we strip out those volatile items, core inflation is still rising, still rising quite a bit. And because because of that, don't expect us to start reducing interest rates, even though inflation at a headline measurement seems to be falling. So interest rates, Charles, went up in a hurry, but it seems like they're going to be a lot stickier on the downside. OK, well, let's move away from Europe, Laurie, and head towards the east. A pair of Chinese economic conferences uh, have attracted some of the top names in business and economics. 
That's right, Charles. And you spoke a little bit about this before the break, but I think all, uh, it's certainly worth coming back to. There have been two big economic conferences in China, and these are essentially referred to as the Davos of China. Davos, of course, the gathering of the great and good of the financial world that happens over the winter in Switzerland every year. The difference between these events and Davos is that people are a little bit more discreet about going to China, given the tension that China has with the U.S. and with the rest of the world right now because of its alignment with Russia and a number of other aggressive actions uh, like the balloon, the spy balloons over the U.S. It's notable that U.S. financiers have been very quiet about the fact that they're attending these conferences. Nonetheless, some very big names are there. Henry Kissinger, the ex-Secretary of State, Tim Cook, the head of Apple, also uh, the head of Samsung, really the great and good of the world. They're just not talking about it quite as much as they talk about when they go to Davos. Of course, one of the people that was also there was Kristalina Georgieva, the head of the IMF. She gave a number of speeches, but I think one of the ones that was most noteworthy, and we'll play a clip in a moment, but she seems to be telling, she's a message not just for China, but for the rest of the world, which which is if you start putting up trade barriers, if you start to decouple in an economic sense, the rest of the world is going to hurt. Take a listen here. Our research shows that the long-term cost of trade fragmentation could be as high as 7% of global GDP, roughly equivalent to the combined annual output of Germany and Japan. And as a highly integrated region, Asia would be most adversely affected by runaway fragmentation. Now, Charles, these are really a word of caution, a warning from Kristalina Georgieva in some of her conversations with Chinese officials that were carried by the Chinese state CCTV, the Chinese state television uh, broadcaster. Uh, she was a little bit more, a uh, little bit nicer, a little bit kinder about what's happening in China. And she very much praised China for it, what it's doing to, to spur economic growth, not least getting rid of some of those COVID restrictions. But there are, though, Laurie, lingering questions over the strength of Chinese recovery. Absolutely, Charles. In fact, I've been incredibly surprised at some of the data that we have seen coming out of China. And haven't, we haven't seen that much of a focus on these data. Certainly when you look at some, you know, some of the big indicators, things like retail sales, industrial production, they all are growing on a year-on-year -year basis, but they're not growing all that rapidly. Retail sales up three and a half percent in the month in January of February of 2023 over the same period a year earlier. And China it tends to group together January and February because of the Lunar uh, New Year period. So we tend to look at those two months uh, at, in aggregate. But compared to a year earlier, retail sales up of uh, 3% is not all that impressive. Industrial production up about 2% year on year. Fixed asset investment and, and, and the asset investment has been such a key driver of Chinese growth over the past decade, up 5%. These numbers look very, very solid if you were any country other than China. But remember, China was essentially locked down a year ago. So we're looking at growth uh, this year over uh, almost no activity a year ago. And these numbers to me look a little bit sluggish. Laurie, thanks very much indeed. Laurie Laird there with the latest global business news. <laughs>